Welcome, Cuthbert Cooks, our Basha in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Good afternoon. Hot one, 47. Middle of July, we've had Cameraman Co's birthday this month, 4th of July baby, so uh, he's turned 20, so happy birthday Cameraman Co. I thought we'd go back to the Garden Maget roots. Um, as I said when we were doing the Tarine episode, you know, I, I, I grew up in Garmage, so I, I love doing Garmage, and what I thought we'd do today is a little bit of marinated salmon or a Gravlax. But what I want to do is put a little bit of a UAE twist on the uh, Gravlax. So Gravlax is a uh, cured salmon, traditional with salt and sugar, a little bit of juniper berries and then uh, some uh, black pepper, marinated and then uh, flavoured with dill. After it's been uh, cured for a couple of days, it's then packed with a, a layer of chopped dill and then uh, again another drying and then it's ready to eat. But what I thought we'd do today, we'd get a salmon and we'd add a little bit of a UAE touch to it. I used to, uh, we used to make our own salmon up in, the, up in the UK and it was great. We used to get beautiful lock run uh, salmon out of Scotland. I mean beautiful, hardly any fat in the, in the actual, uh, in the salmon fillets, beautiful colour. What you should do, young chefs, you go onto the internet and you have and you, you type in compare fresh salmon to farm salmon. And you can see the difference in the in the colour and the texture and the firmness of the of the salmon fillet. So we were lucky, we used to get our uh, beautiful salmon down from Scotland. And then we had a very simple smoking machine. And uh, Patrick John, my chef at the time, he said, right, you Aussie Blake, you can do the you can do the salmon. So we used to uh, marinate our salmon just in salt and then we'd smoke it slowly in our little smoking machine about six to eight fillets at a time. So every, every day we were smoking uh, salmon because we used to go through a fair whack of it in the uh, fine dining restaurant and of course for sandwiches and of course on the buffets for the, uh, for the banqueting and that. So our salmon, it was absolutely beautiful and we used to get uh, wood down from Scotland as well. We used to get wood chips made from old uh, whiskey barrels to uh, smoke the salmon in. I remember once we had a bloke come down to try and sell us some salmon. And uh, the supplier, so chef said, he said, Andy, go and get some of your, your salmon. Show this bloke our salmon. So I got out of side. And we used to, used to keep it in the garmage in, in trays of oil. And then when we needed it, we'd rotate it through to, uh, to dry a little bit. So I'd bring it out, give it a little trim up again. Sliced off some salmon for this bloke. Gave him a couple of slices. He ate it and he said, well, I'll just get back in my van and go back to my factory. He said, because your salmon is, is better than mine. I'll never forget that because that was just doing it homemade. You know, and uh, we were lucky we had a big sous vide production kitchen in, uh, in the Hilton back then. So we were able to vacuum pack and store the salmon as well for preservation. But the flavour and the consistency was brilliant. Yeah, because we, we had only a couple of us that used to look after it and we used to teach the young blokes as well how to make it and the young girls of course and then we'd, we'd really monitor how we made the salmon so we were really particular one about the quality of the salmon and the freshness of the salmon so Kevin the butcher he'd get them in and he would uh, We'd bring them down whole, gutted, and then Kevin had filleted them out. We'd remove the pin bones, and then we'd salt them with a the beautiful rock salt. And Kev, Kev used to make sure that the salting was done properly. And then, then it was handed over to, to us, and we would, in the garmage, and then we would smoke it off. And then we'd uh, look after it in the oil, and then we'd pack it, and then we'd slice, you know. So you got to be careful, you've got to be particular with certain foods, and it's all about tradition as well. So it's great to be able to buy products ready made but also to be able to know how to make them yourself sometimes and so we're going to make we're going to make today a gravlax because we used to do our own gravlax as well and it's a similar similar uh, process it's salting and curing for about 48 hours and then we we flavor it up and then we dry it and then we pack it with that which whatever flavoring we want and we used to make all sorts of uh, gravlax you know the traditional ones that you would see in the nordic countries but then we used to add a little bit of lemongrass we do a little ginger little asian flavored one and then we'd be able to uh, do different styles of sauces or different accompaniments with each of the gravlax so it was good you know and you see now you know guys doing beetroot uh, gravlax you do orange gravlax you know it's whatever you think is a, a great combination to do that's what you should do so today we're going to do gravlax and it's pretty simple to start. It's a salmon fillet, yeah. We've got some rock salt, 
We've got some brown sugar. You can use white sugar if you want, but I'm going to use the brown sugar. I've got a lemon. And I've got my date syrup, so my dibs. And we're going to use that as a little bit of a, not only for sweetening and curing, but it's also going to colour the top of the salmon. So we're going to get a different colour on the top of the salmon. So when you slice it, hopefully we're going to have this little rim of uh, darkened uh, skin when we, or darkened flesh when we slice out the salmon. And then in a couple of days time, because it's going to take us two days to do this, we're going to do 48 hours of, um, of marination, then we're going to wash it off, then we're going to dry it again. Um, going to do it all in the home fridge, in the good old fridge. Um, my fridge runs really cold, so I've got to make sure that I keep, it, keep the food safety aspect even at home at the right level, so I'm going to monitor, monitor the temperature. And then the other ingredient we're going to do, we're going to go out the backyard and we're going to pick some dates. Uh, we're in the middle of the date harvest season now. You look all over the city and all the dates are wrapped up in their little, uh, in their little nylon sacks all, ha all hanging off the trees. So we've got our date tree out the back and we've got uh, two really big bunches of dates and then uh, two smaller ones. Uh, we weren't quick enough to uh, pack them all up so the birds got some of them but it's okay, feeding the birds is all good. So we're going to get a couple of uh, the fresh dates that have already started to ripen and then you're going to see that there's red ones and the, and the darker ones of course are the ones that are now ready so they've got quite a lot of sugar in them as well so we we monitor how much sugar versus the the salt we're going to actually put inside the uh, marination the salt and the sugar is is 120 grams 120 grams so 120 grams of coarse rock salt and 120 grams of this of the sugar we're going to maybe drop down the amount of sugar. We're going to add in the uh, add in dibs as well. Normally, we'd have juniper berries. Now, juniper berries are a very old uh, flavouring, and we'd marinate with the juniper berries to give that flavour of juniper to the to the gravlax. I don't have any uh, juniper berries, but I got my dates. So I'm going to chop up some dates and add that to the first marination to start getting the flavour of dates into the salmon as well. And then when we come to doing the, um, the actual last process of uh, the Gravlax, there is a very old Emirati recipe for uh, baked fish. And so I've been inspired to think about how I could interpret a, a good Emirati cuisine influenced uh, very, very European style um, dish. So in the old days, they used to take the whole gropers or hamor as they're called here. So it's a groper or a hamor fish. And they used to just grind up the dates into a, into a very thick paste and pack the fish with the, uh, with the date crust basically. And then just charcoal grill the dates. Uh, charcoal grill the fish covered in this, uh, in this date crust. And that flavour would then go, the sweet flavour would then go into the fish. So I'm going to give that a go as my, as my topping for the, um, for the, uh, for the Gravlax. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to, I'm going to mix some date paste or the fresh dates that we pick outside and I might add a, a little bit of almonds I'm not too sure I, I still got to think about it but I think what I'll do I'll, I'll put a little bit of uh, date paste crust on top of our uh, on top of our salmon and then just let it dry again for another 12 hours 14 hours and then we're going to slice it off so hopefully that that little fine layer of minced dates is going to give us a little extra touch so anyway, let's go out the back code and let's grab some dates. So we'll, uh, you're going to undo, we're still recording good. So out the backyard of our Basha 2, we're quite lucky, we've got a nice backyard. So here comes code with his camera, get me shoes on. I hope the minor birds don't attack me. I've got a couple of minor birds that think they own the backyard. Right code. Oh, I forgot me, forgot me plate to put the dates in code. Hang on a minute, back in a minute. Here we go, shut the door, don't want to let the, don't want to let the AC out. It's roasting outside. So, in the corner, we've got our, uh, we've got our date tree, as you can see. We've got four big bunches of dates, so you can see that the, uh, 
Our little man has bunched them all up. We've, we tie them up to the other frond. They're, they hang off one of the, the big flower pods that come out of the middle of the tree. So these start to flower in about uh, late May, early June. So yeah, mid-May. And so this has been now two months, but as you can see, we've got red ones that are really, really hard. And then we've got some that are already starting to, to ripen up. So we're nice and hot, and on this side you can see. So the difference is the really hard ones versus the nice soft ones that are, that are getting ripe, yeah? We put them in the hessian, of course, to keep the birds away. On this side, so this one's already sprung a leak. So we'll leave that one for the birds. But we've got the red ones. You can eat the red ones if you want, but I don't. Um, my friend Magid, he reckons you can, uh, you put them in the freezer and then you can actually finish the ripening of dates in the freezer. So we've got a, in the freezer we've got dates that are over a year old. So I'll just uh, pick a few and uh, give cameraman code a rest in the, I uh, think, so you see, look at that, see, nice and soft. Yeah, have a look inside. Beautiful, lovely jubbly. Yeah, a little seed there. Toss that in the garden, might grow another tree. Straight off the tree, beauty. Lovely flavour, a little bit sweet, a little bit tart. Mmm, right, harvesting coat. I might go around the other side, coat. Let that be there. Mmm. So I'm going to open up this. I'm going to open up this one. There he's up the top there. So we've opened up our little date sack. Just pick them off, put them on my plate. They come off real easy, these ones. They're nice and uh, they're nice and ripe. You can see that they're just ready to pop into the mouth. Away we go. See how they grow on their little sticks on the stalks. Just pick them off. We won't need many because uh, you know we don't want to don't want to add too much sugar because we need the um, we need the uh, the salt to do the curing, preserving. That's why we use it. Here we go, these ones down the bottom here. See, so this one's already dried out, giving you to the birds. You can see the red ones, really hard, yeah? People eat the red ones. Personally, I don't like them. That's all right. Got nice soft ones, look at that, beautiful, fresh harvest. Oh, the birds have had that one. Toss that in the garden, bit of compost. We're gonna give them a wash. Some beautiful ones in here, look at that, winner. Beauty. I'm not too sure which variety of dates these are, because there's many, many, many varieties of dates. They have beautiful big ones. Beautiful big kajuri dates. I think they're about like that size, I think they're called. Lovely dates. You want to have a look on the internet, young chefs, look up dates, varieties, yeah? So there we go, there's our harvest of, um, of fresh dates. Just make sure the ones that have been picked at by the birds, we don't want to use them. Put them back underneath with my orange peel uh, composting. Take these out, pop these down the ground, give that to the birds, keep them away from the others. But these are really nice. Also keeps the little animals away. Little rats. Rats enjoy the, uh, rats enjoy. And uh, when I was working out in the desert in Bubble Champs, we used to have to watch the snakes because the snakes had come up, uh, would climb up the palm trees to eat the dates. Here you go, Code. Look at that. Beauty, you hang on to them, mate, while I, you hang on to them, while I wrap up our tree again. So we get our, uh, we wrap our tree up again. It's very simple, just up she goes like that. Hook it over said frond. There we go. Simple knot, beauty, that'll do us. Wrap him round again. Ready for the next harvest. Beautiful. Right, let's go back inside, Code. Working up a sweat. So back inside, back inside in the cool of the AC. Got me dates, gonna give them a quick wash. 
a little bit of a wash just to make sure there's no no bits and bobs on there just wash them off in the sink they're nice they're beautiful beautiful little dates lovely nice and soft so basically what I'm going to do now I'm just going to um, I'm just going to take out the seeds yeah pop the seeds out of the dates you know um, I mean dates uh, there's so many varieties of dates and so many so many dishes you can do with dates in the Emirates they use the dates for um, desserts as well there's a dessert called batith yeah it can be made in uh, two two ways it's made with uh, semolina flour and uh, and minced dates and they make like a almost like a uh, like an apple crumble style topping so it's a powdery warm uh, dessert that's flavored up with saffron and cardamoms and the dates and then the other ones are but these is uh, another is like a dessert um, a little biscuit yeah but they're pressed they're a little pressed biscuit that are, that are baked as well again just a different different variety and that's the thing with the Emirates cuisine you have you know you have two two dishes exactly the same name but uh, quite quite different uh, styles of presentation so that's uh, it's a good learning you know the Emirati cuisine is uh, is a unique cuisine uh, to the Gulf region as well some things are similar to the other uh, Khaliji states but the um, the majority is quite unique to the Emirates itself I think that'll be enough I'll have a look how much that is hang on a minute I'll just turn me turn me little uh, turn me little scale on here tar that out uh, there we go something wrong with me scale probably about 80 gram in there that's a little bit too much something wrong with me scale me scales me scales upset maybe too hot give him a turn him off all I'm gonna do with the um, with the dates is roughly chop them very roughly chop them like we would with the um, like we would with the uh, juniper berries if we were using the juniper berries so I'm just cutting that I've taken the seeds out make sure there's no stalk but this is just for the marination so it's it's going to be it's going to be scraped off and washed off once we um, once we've dried the dates they're nice and sticky yeah so we've got our got our dates just pop these over here and then we measure out the 120 gram of um, 120 gram of um, sugar there we go pop that in there as well and then our rock salt pop me a lid on the brown sugar you can use white sugar it's all good pop me rock salt in there so basically equal quantities of uh, of rock salt equal quantities of the sugar making a little bit of an allowance for the dates and then juice of a lemon just wash me knife quickly so juice of a lemon you can use lime if you want put juice of two small limes in there or a couple of uh, or juice of juice of uh, one lemon would be enough and I'm just going to cut that I'm, I'm, I'm going to add that at the last minute because I don't want it. Uh, I don't want it uh, dissolving all the sugar and salt. So we've got our salt. So we've got the salt here. We've got the dates and the um, brown sugar ready to go. So equal quantities of salt and sugar. Lemon ready to go. And now the dibs we're going to add last at the end. So now what we're going to do, we're going to bring out our beautiful bit of uh, salmon. Now I have bought myself a little bit of... Um, I brought myself a little bit of Scottish salmon. Chilled, so a fresh product, not frozen. 
I had the boys prepare him up so I've kept him nice and cold. Just going to open him up. Big piece, quite a big piece of uh, salmon, so you can see. So, we have got skin on. We have got down here runs the little pin bones. Now all the pin bones have been taken out. So, but you just take your finger, run it down a wee bit. This, there's a belly flap. I just want to trim that off a little bit. So I just cut that down with the knife. Cut that out. This can be used, this you'd clean it up, use it for, um, use it for a little bit of mousse, yeah. It's a nice, you'll see the difference between the chilled, for fresh product and farmed, you see a difference between the, uh, the lock run or the fresh natural salmons as well because of the, uh, the color of the, of the flesh, yeah. I'm just gonna remove, there's a couple of little bits of fat still on there, so I just wanna trim that off, just carefully. Don't wanna waste, don't wanna waste any, just trim that off. A Little bit more there from the belly, because I want my salmon to be sliced easy as well. Just gonna slice that away, perfect. Now you can, if you want, just take off the end bit. I leave this bit on, yeah? What you have to remember though is when you marinate it, this will be really salty. So this, this area here gets a lot more uh, salt because it's thinner of course, yeah? Versus up here where it's a bit fat. There is a very hard bit in here, so we're gonna lift that out where it sits along the backbone. So that's very simple, it just, you just go in with your knife and just lift out the, uh, the little bit of sinew that's there. Don't want that getting in the way when we cut. And when you slice, we also don't want to be uh, slicing out the, um, the meat as well. So there we go. Done. Hardly anything. Little bit of waste there. We're going to pop that over here and we're going to use that up later on. Right, wash me hands. So the salmon's looking great. Just treat him carefully. There we go. Lovely little bit of uh, lovely salmon there. Just wipe down my bench. So it does take a little bit of uh, patience. Got to keep nice and clean because it's a raw product, right? So it's. Uh, it's a little bit risky, yeah, not risque, a little bit risky. So we want to make sure that our food hygiene is, is at the ultimate level. We now get a sheet of aluminium foil. Because that's, that's how we're going to marinate him. We're going to wrap him up in a piece of aluminium foil. So we've got our aluminium foil on the bench, which we're then going to place our, our mixture so there's two parts to the mixture we put a line underneath put a little bit underneath skin side down and then the rest we spread out on the top so now what we do is we add our ingredients together so we've got our dates brown sugar we're going to add some black pepper so i've got some uh, crushed off black pepper just in my pestle and mortar so i want that quite whole yeah so we're going to do a little bit of it's about 20 to 30 uh, black peppercorns. So that's gone in with the dates and the sugar. In with the salt, we spoon, mix it all up. Now we're gonna have to break it up a little bit because the uh, dates are quite uh, stuck. You can use a spoon. I'm gonna stick my hands in there in a minute because it's easier to do it with your hands. Now you can chop the dates up a bit more if you want. So you want to get this nicely mixed together, nicely, 
distributed. You don't want lumps of uh, sugar and lumps of salt sitting separate, so it's got to be blended nicely. In with our lemon juice. Quickly. Done. Half is enough because it's a nice juicy lemon. So I'm only going to use half. Yeah. Mix. Remember, you don't want a salt, you don't want a sauce, yeah? Then, a little bit of the mixture, straight away, onto the aluminium. Now, if you think, and this is where practice comes in, if you think you need to add a little bit more salt and sugar marinade, because your salmon's quite big, and I think I'm gonna have to do that, yeah? Then no problem. Again, you mix it up, you just allow, Equal quantities of salt, equal quantities of sugar. And it, you know, so we've got our dates here. Our dates are gonna be our substitute juniper berry, so that's gonna have flavor. Yeah, we wanna have a little bit more down this end where it's a bit thicker. And then we taper it down here. So that's, that's all you have to put there. Salmon, skin side down, beautiful. Now I'm gonna use my hands, I wash my hands so it's all clean, got no worries on that. And then, I've got my overhead fan on because it's really hot. And then we just spread the rest over our beautiful looking salmon fillet. Now, what I've seen here, I don't believe, and I'm gonna have a taste of the marinade as well in a minute, yeah? Because I wanna make sure that I've got the combination of sugar and salt right. I'm pressing this in. You can break up the, the dates a little bit with your hands. It doesn't matter. I am going to make another little bit of um, little bit of uh, my salt and sugar curing because you've got to have enough to make sure that you cure the salt and salmon. So you're looking at 250 grams. It is a big piece of salmon. So I am going to have a quick wash of my hands and then I'm going to make another little bit as well. One, two, two tablespoons. Mix. Now remember we're gonna add a little bit more dibs. We've added a little extra sugar as well through the dates. Mix that up. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle this on. Cause I do wanna, I, I want this, you know, when you, when you cure salmon, the end result, it has to be quite firm, yeah? So we put this, um, we sprinkle this on, we cover it completely, we've got our dates happening there. That'll be enough actually, a little bit more on the side here, because we're going to wrap him up now. You're going to have to, when you wrap this up, you wrap it up nice and tight, and we're going to turn it every eight hours. I'm going to turn it over, turn it over, yeah, just to make sure that the, there we go. I'm just going to uh, take a little bit with my fingers here. Yeah, that's fine. It's a little bit salty, should be, yeah. Wash my hands again quickly. So as you can see, the, uh, the, the whole fillet is covered nicely in the salt and sugar marinade, yeah. Uh, it's already started to cure. And then if you zoom in cameraman code, you can see how we've, we've just roughly put the dates on top. You know, you can put a few more on there if you want. We grab another couple of dates and just place and just place the dates on top, yeah. And they'll they'll slowly break down and go into get get the flavour into the um, into the salmon as well. Washing my hands again, quick. Oh, the, the cold water's hot today. It's a stinker today. It's about 47. Now, as a touch from the Emirates, just clear up our space a bit here, cameraman code. So we've got our sugar, we've got our salt, dates, all good, right? Let's move our blue board out of the way. Wash that off in a minute, code. So there's our beautiful piece of salmon marinating, yeah? Now, dibs. So I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of this over the top. Now this will work with the salt and the sugar. It'll help liquidize. Now I want that flavor into the salmon 
and I want the colour. I want this brown colour. That's enough, yeah? Just a wee drizzle. Now, we just wrap him up. So we fold him nicely. Just fold that over like that. Fold this one over like that. Pressing, whoop, and escape date. Wrap him up. Make him nice and tight, yeah? If you need another layer of uh, aluminium foil, use a good quality thick aluminium foil as well, yeah? Remember down this end is the, the thin end. Then we just turn him. Again, pressing as well. You start pressing him down. You can weight these when you put them in the fridge. If you want to, you can, put a, you can pop a little weight on top just to, just to squeeze a little bit to help the, uh, the curing process. And then final turn. So again, we've turned him over again. So then he has skin side down. And now it's gonna go on a tray into my fridge every eight hours, rotate. And you'll see slowly from the, from the, the gaps in the aluminium foil, our, um, our salmon, the, the, the liquid will start to come out, yeah? There'll be, and then you can, we'll have a little taste as well. We'll film in another 24 hours, and then we'll film again in 48 hours when we unwrap him, yeah? And, and we'll see that the, as the salt and the sugar draw out the liquid from the salmon, the flesh firms up, the colour of the dates will start to hopefully, bit of an experiment this one, hopefully be able to uh, start to colour the top of the salmon. If it's not covered, uh, coloured enough that I want, I'm going to actually marinate it in a little bit of that dibs. Yeah, so I'm going to, when, when we come to the, um, when we come to the washing stage and I've washed him, yeah, we're going to dry him and leave him in the fridge for uh, overnight drying out, yeah, and then I'm going to smear it with a little bit of the uh, date syrup and then let it dry again. And this will then give it the tinge that I want to see. So this one's ready to go. I mean, you can make, we used to make, oh, 12, 14 at a time. So what's that, about 24 or 28 fillets at a time, different flavours, and then with our vacuum packing machines we're able to preserve them. And also when we used to vacuum them with the dill and everything, it used to really compress down the, uh, the dill so you get this really intense flavour of freshly chopped dill into your beautiful Gravilax. And when you sliced him off, you had this beautiful green rim of uh, the dill and the beautiful orange colour of, uh, of the salmon. Beautiful uh, display, beautiful flavours. So that's it, that's part one of uh, Gravlax and Garmage. Yeah, a little bit of Emirati influence with our dates, utilising our dates from the backyard. And we'll see you in a couple of hours when we film again. Okay, good. Welcome back, part two of Gravlax and Cuthbert Cooks. Right, so I'm going to ask cameraman Code to come forward. Our Gravilax or our salmon fillet's been sat for the last 48 hours and uh, you can see the juices come out. So this one, you see the colour is, uh, is from the date syrup and everything. So I was turning it for um, every eight hours I turned it. And now what we're going to do, we're going to unveil. Et voila. And we can see, we can actually see that the... Um, the salmon has changed colour, the texture is nice and firm, so that means that the salt and the sugar has been doing its job. We're going to scrape off by hand, we're just going to remove the excess salt and the, um, and the dates. So we've got that just being removed, so that's given our flavour. That would be, that firmness and that colour is exactly what we were looking for. Can you see that code? Yeah, in Gravlax, you can see how firm it is. You know, when we press it, it's not, it's not collapsing because, of course, that's the, um, that's the amount of salt and the amount of sugar 
we put on. See, we clean the back off. There's the dates underneath as well, so the dates are nice and sticky. So hopefully we've got a bit of flavour going through there from those. So I'm just going to pick him up. And he's looking great, he can be handled. You know, uh, see that's nice. That'll be very salty. This bit down here will be really salty, yeah? But the rest will be lovely. I'm just gonna pop him in there. Then this one we fold up and we're just gonna dispose of that one. And then we're gonna wash off the, uh, the salmon in the sink. And then we'll come back after cameraman Cody takes some close-ups of the beautiful color of the salmon. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice, and it, and it's exactly how it should be, and exactly how I was wanting it to be as well. So I'm just over in my sink, just washing off the uh, the trays, get the water cold because uh, we've only got hot water in Dubai at the moment. So I've got to make sure the just washing my tray, getting it ready, just dry that off, and then cameraman codes getting some uh, nice close-up shots hopefully of the beautiful salmon. The colour is absolutely wonderful. The colour is really, 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 really nice. So I'll just wash that down, just clean me bench a bit. And then, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over to the sink and then I'll uh, just give this a wash back in a minute. Right, so we've washed him off and now we're just going to pat him dry. Got a little bit of kitchen paper. And you can be quite, you know, you can press it down because as you can see, you see it's quite, uh, I'm really tempted to eat a bit, <laughs> just to taste. I'm very impatient with these things sometimes. So I'm just wipe all that down and then we can flip him over. I want to dry the, uh, I want to dry the underside as well, dry off the skin. You can see that's quite firm yeah and the, the color that's just the uh, that's the salt and the sugar have done its work this is a great looking piece of salmon and now we're going all we're going to do now is give it another pat down and then I'm going to leave it in the fridge and we're going to air dry him for another 24 hours until it's nice and dry. So that's the first stage of our Gravlax. So we did our marination with our equal quantities of salt and sugar. We've done our, we put our little Emirati touch in by adding a little bit of dates to it and a little bit of that dip syrup. And now we're, we've rolled him, we've, uh, Every eight hours I turned him over, yeah, we didn't press him, there was no need, and the consistency has come correctly. I'm now going to pop him back in the fridge, we're going to air dry him for a couple of hours, and then you can air dry up to 20 hours, 24 hours if you need to, um, just depends on how much salt. Remember in the, in, the, in the first bit we actually added a little extra salt, that's why we do have a little bit of extra curing that's happened. So we may only dry this one for a, like about 12 hours and then we're going to come back and we're going to apply our Emirati date um, crust or our date topping onto the, um, onto the salmon and have that ready for when we want to uh, slice him up after another couple of hours. So. We'll see you in a bit. Here we go. Back again. Look, we've just had this come out of the uh, out of the fridge. We had it dry for about uh, 12 hours now. It's nice, very nice. It's just dry. I'm going to give it one more pat down. Going to give it another pat down with my tissue. Now, normally we at this stage, all we do is get a big bunch of fresh dill, finely chop it up. Smear it over the top without the stalks, of course. Make sure just the just the little flowers, just the little, you know, the, the fresh parts of the dill, and we pack it on, and then we'd vacuum it to compress the uh, to compress the uh, the dill onto the salmon, and then that flavour would then sink into the into the salmon fillet. Now we've got our We've got our little salmon fillet here ready. I'm gonna have a bit of a taste because I just can't be, I can't wait. Just being a bit impatient, yeah? 
So I'll get a little, uh, now he's a, he's a quandary young chef. Is it fresh or is it cooked? So what board do we use, yeah? So we use a cooked board. Look, I'm just going to lift this up. Got me salmon knife, got one of my old salmon knives out. And I'm going to uh, very thinly slice off some of this excess excess pieces. A bit wibbly wobbly my board, just kind of... I just want to have a taste just to see how my wafer thin. Nice. Yep, you got the, the sugar coming through, you got the salt of course. We're down this thin end, yeah? But when we slice Gravelax like smoked salmon, we're gonna, we're gonna really shave it down. We want it, we want it super finely done. So that's tasting nice. So just wash my hands after having that nibble. Um, so now, to add, here we go. Experimentation, young chefs, experimentation. So, what are we gonna do? Instead of using dill, and because we've had the dibs, and we've had the, uh, the dates, and we've had the dib syrup, and we've got a little bit of flavor going, it's a little bit dark in the color of the skin. If you remember, I wanted the uh, flesh to get a bit dark. You can see some of the areas where it's a bit brown, where the dibs is uh, marinated in, and the, uh, and the dates. So what I've been, I've been out the backyard again, I picked myself a couple of handfuls of dates. These are super ripe, yeah? They're really, really ripe, yeah? So I've taken the seeds out. I'm gonna chop these up and almost make it into a paste, yeah? I'm gonna thicken it up with a little bit of almond meal, yeah? So this is just ground almonds, yeah? Why, why not? You gotta try, you gotta experiment, yeah? Because I wanna make sure that the, the, the packing once we've put it in the fridge that it stays on the salmon yeah and then when we slice it we're going to get these little rings of our date flavor as we slice our, our pieces of uh, gravlax off and when we slice the gravlax we want to be able to arrange it on a plate so that we can see this beautiful date crust yeah hopefully the almonds will hold it together after this i'm just going to uh put it back on a tray, I'm then going to pop it into the, I'm going to cover it just with cling film, pop it back in the fridge, and then in a few hours time we'll bring it out and we're going to slice him up and have a, have a taste, yeah? Do a couple of presentations maybe and uh, play around with the plating. So first things first, dates, do like me dates as Mickey would say, so I just move that over there. So. I mean, they're, you know, they're not going to take much to chop these ones. As you can see, they're just chopping down nicely. And it's almost a paste as soon as it comes off the knife, yeah? Because they're really, 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 really ripe, yeah? These were just, these, these ones, if you remember in the orange bag that was hanging on the tree, most of these had already fallen off the stalks. And the rest, I just gave it a bit of a shake and then, um, and then it just fell off. You want to make sure, young chefs, that you get all the seeds out. Yeah, get get the pits, the the seeds out of the dates. You don't want you don't want to be chopping along, and then all of a sudden you hit a date and it skews your knife off and you cut your finger off. You know, doesn't go well with salmon, chopped finger. So there we have that. You know, this is. You know, you can see that see the consistency you know just from the chopping it's already it's already making itself into a into a paste naturally yeah I may nearly have enough because it's going to be a thin layer we're not going to pack it on like that it's going to be a really really thin layer that we're al almost like a smear that we're going to smear onto the top of the um, onto the top of the uh, salmon right that'll do I think that's enough I think that's enough cameraman code. As you can see, we'll chop all that up again just in case there's any big bits, but I don't think there are any big bits. So chop all that up, and that's really formed a, a, a trusty paste, yeah? And we want to be able to, we're going to have a little taste. Ooh, ooh, yummy. Now that's going to give a really, Different flavour. Now, if you remember from what I said at the beginning of this episode, was that the um, the whole point of doing the gravlax 
was to try and get some Emirati influence into it. So as it's date season, and as I explained, the dates are in full, full harvest mode at the moment. I'm using a recipe that I read years and years ago when I first came out here in 92, 93. I arrived here in 92, so when I was having a rummage around in the markets and having a look at what they were doing, I found this recipe that actually just packed on, it was exactly a date paste like that, onto a whole fish, scales and all, huh? stick him on and char grill your hummer, and then you just peel off the skin and the dates come out and that sweet sticky flavor from the dates was inside the fish as well so that's what I'm trying to um, that's what I'm trying to uh, to do when I do this one now I'm not too sure if I actually need to put any almond meal in this but I'm going to just because I said I was going to so we're going to try it yeah so I got my almond meal I have no recipe for this so this is completely ad hoc yeah a little bit of almond meal And then I'm going to mix that in. What it actually does, it'll just help dry it out a little bit and it'll help us firm up. It's almost like making batith. Yeah, that's better. So it's just, just firming up the, uh, the date paste, yeah? I'm going to use my hands, yeah? I was given two hands to use, not to put gloves on. <laughs> Um, uh, that's all right. Yeah, that's actually it's actually stiffened it right up. So that's going to help me pack him on. Yeah. So we just pop that there. Arm and meal away. Put that over there. Remove this one. Bring my salmon to the forefront. Pop out a little bit of extra there now. This is where it's going to get a little bit messy, but anyway, so zoom in coat. Now you could, you could roll this, you could actually roll this in between uh, sheets of, um, sheets of uh, cling film, yeah, get it nice and thin, freeze it, then lay it on top, but I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my hands, yeah, I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to get my tray back. I'm going to pop it in the tray because I don't want to be handling the salmon too much after this has gone on. So we pop that there. Ooh, I'm going to smell that. Mmm. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to smear. Can you see that code? We're just going to smear this onto the top of the salmon. Yeah. And it actually sits on. Yeah, it'll be. It'll take a little bit of work to do it. Yeah. But we'll make it work. So then we just smear on this little bits of uh, minced up dates, thicken it up with a bit of almond meal, just to make a wee crust, yeah? Now it does, as you can see, it's proving to be a little bit of a trick, yeah? But with perseverance and a light touch, we just keep adding the date crust, yeah? Slicing's gonna be the trick, yeah? making sure that we get some dates actually onto the, uh, onto the slices as they come off. That'll be the trick. However, as we're gonna dry them again a little bit, the uh, almond meal will soak into the dates and we should actually be not too bad. So as you can see, it's a bit ad hoc, yeah? It's not uh, an exact science because it's something new that we're trying and that's the trick, you know, just to be a little bit adventurous and not to uh, not to always follow what the others do, try to think about something that you could actually do, do for yourself. So that's, that'd be enough as a thickness on our, on, our, on our salmon. So I'm just going to pull this back on the board and finish that off. So I've got myself uh, halfway up the salmon now and um, I'm just using a little bit of water, keep my fingers moist and that's helping me just to smear my little date, date paste on, because I'm getting it really thin, yeah? I'm really getting it thin, because I need to make sure it dries out a little bit. It's gonna be a challenge to slice, but anyway, life's full of little, little challenges, isn't it? So, with this one, I'm gonna be able to get a nice thin layer, using my fingers, get my fingers all nice and moist, and then just keep pressing that 
the dates in so it keeps this nice even and very very thin layer of, of date paste yeah it's actually worked out quite well now remember it mightn't look very appetizing as it is at the moment however if you can imagine as we must imagine as chefs cooks you know, we have to create and we have to imagine what it's going to look like. So you're going to have this orange, this beautiful orange flavour, this beautiful orange colour, almost fluorescent. When you slice this, you're going to get this rim of the darkened dates, contrasting on the beautiful salmon colour. We could just add a add a bit of semolina in. We'd have a we'd have a batif. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So that's that's really coming along well. We just keep smoothing out, just making sure that it's thin. We don't want it too thick because then it will overpower the subtle flavours that we've got in the salmon. But of course, we want the dates also to, also to have a little bit of uh, presence with the salmon that's why we're doing it so the sweetness will come from these dates it'll help combat some of the saltiness but it also gives a nice a nice contrasting flavor as well and now we're just finishing off just adding the last little bits because you, you know you've got to cover all the fit flesh yeah just the extra little bits here and there and that's pretty much done guys so I'm happy with that bit of a struggle to get going with the uh, with the the paste getting it on there but a little bit of water on the fingers that was the trick and I've got it really thin so it's not going to be too uh, too overpowering it's going to be a trick to slice so that's going to be interesting when we slice this in a couple of hours but I'm happy with the way that that's uh, progressed and I'm happy that I've got that done and there you go, so you have your date crust on top of your marinated salmon. And then we pop him back in the fridge, dry him out again, and then we're gonna slice him off and we're gonna see how he tastes. We'll be back later. Welcome back, part three. Wow, what a long one this one is. The uh, final step in our uh, Gravlax exploration into Emirati Gravlax. I'm gonna whip up a sauce. I'm going to make a little salad and then we're going to bring the gravlax out and we're going to slice him off and we're going to have a taste. So what I thought I'd do, I'd do uh, one or two presentations. Uh, presentation not one of my fortes, I must admit, but anyway, you know, one must, one must understand one's weaknesses. So if my mate Mario was here, I'd prepare everything and I'd say, Mario, put that on the plate and look at, make it look nice, yeah? Mario's my, one of my chefs from down at Madinat C&I. Mario is uh, the senior executive sous chef that we have and he's also been on the Emirates Culinary Guild's national culinary team for the United Arab Emirates in the senior division and the last one and a half plus years he has been mentoring the young chef team for the Emirates Culinary Guild so the young chefs they went to Germany last year and uh, picked up some medals they went to Luxembourg they picked up some medals so Mario has been uh, really helpful uh, developing the young guys of the UAE and I thank Mario for that along with Alana who's our pastry guru lady the guru s and she's uh, also been helping uh, young chefs like Thurindu uh, make, make, uh, make a place for themselves in the in the industry so Mario and uh, Alana thank you for your continued support and uh, if you were here, Mario, you'd be doing the plating because I've done all the hard work, yeah? Mario's got a great hand for plating. So we'll get right into it. So for the sauce, very simple. I thought we'd again use the good old blenders, vegan, uh, vegan mayonnaise, yeah? Why? Well, again, it's gluten-free, it's allergen-free. So why not use it? Yes, I'm using it with a seafood product, but when you've got people that got an allergy to gluten or an allergy to this and that, 
and they want to, and they, but they can enjoy seafood or fish, then why not use a product that you can then make a sauce with that makes that uh, even more nice for the for the people that are going to enjoy your dishes, yeah? And the, the Blender's Vegan Mayonnaise is one of those mayonnaises that you can use for everything and also you can be uh, guaranteed that you're not going to uh, upset somebody with a, uh, an allergen or an allergy towards uh, to dairy for example or the gluten. So good product that we're going to use again. So as I said earlier, Emirati, what, what are we going to do that's different from about another sauce for uh, Gravlax? Well, we're going to add a little bit of date syrup inside. We're going to use chopped parsley with a flat leaf parsley. We're going to squeeze a bit of lemon in because we want to give a little bit of a sharp taste on the sauce that we're going to use. And we're going to put that underneath the uh, Gravlax when we slice it. And then that's going to give a little bit of uh, acid to the, uh, to the flavor as well. And then also what I've done, I've made a little yogurt mixed with cucumber and mint, yeah? which is uh, a very, very traditional uh, dish that we, uh, that we use a lot of in the Emirates, yeah? You eat it with everything, yeah? You can eat it with uh, cold food, hot food, put it on your kebabs, put it on your rice, yeah? So a little of, uh, cucumber of mint, nice little meze, a little cold thing, so I'm gonna mix mayonnaise with that. Now, I just said it's yogurt, so if you wanna omit the, uh, the dairy, then you would, do, you would do without the yogurt. So what you do, you water down the mayonnaise a little bit, but use the mint and the cucumber. Yeah, I want to. I want to use the uh, want to use the yogurt in this one, and then what we'll do, we'll add the mayonnaise as well. But what you can do is just omit the uh, the yogurt if you want a completely uh, uh, vegetarian or dairy free product as well. So we pop this in there. We're not going to do too much. Just need a little bit. Don't want to waste. But I don't need a lot, I just need a little smear to put on the, to put on the plates we're going to use. So that's the good old blenders there. Pop this in the sink coat. Little drizzle of uh, the, 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 the dibs. Gives a little bit of colour. Little... Uh, kind of give this a bit of a squeeze. There we are, just want to get some, get some lovely lemon juice into that one. That should be enough, not too much. We're going to have a little taste in a minute as well. And then the parsley, I'm just going to very roughly chop the parsley. Not going to, uh, not going to mince it up, just going to roughly chop it so we have the, uh, the nice texture and the nice flavours coming through. I'm not going to chop the stalks. I've actually taken the majority of the stalks off the parsley. So now we're just going to get that just on the board. Going to give that a bit of a chop. And we're going to pop that, fold that through. You could add extra mint if you wanted to. You could use coriander if you wanted to. But I'm just going to use the good old uh, flat leaf par parsley that uh, we use for tabula. And uh, we don't use the curly parsley like we would in Europe because we have plenty of the uh, flat leaf here. It's all been washed off before we started. We just mix that through gently. The sauce is changing the colours, of course. You get a nice, you get the nice brown, turning the turning the sauce with the dibs. We've got our nice little bit of uh, breaking up our mayonnaise. Got our nice little bits of parsley going through. Nice consistency. You'll see that coming through nicely there. Just move all this out of the way for a minute. Got the wind blowing code. Got our, uh, got our overhead fan on again. Another hot day out here in the Emirates. Up around 45 today. There was people sending pictures of their temperature charts from their cars today where it's reading 70. Uh, 50, sorry. So I didn't go outside. I was afraid I was going to melt. Just wash my knife off quickly. Just wipe down my board, get rid of that extra chopped bits of parsley everywhere. So I've done my little sauce. I'm going to have a taste of that now. I want to see how that how the flavour of that is. See if I need to add a little extra um, 
See if I have to add a little extra uh, lemon juice or if it's too sweet with the dibs. Now that's nice, it's nice and sweet. You got the, the, the acid of the of the lemon there still and you also still get the kick of the mint yogurt that's mixed into it as well. Remember if you want to make this uh, without dairy you use the blender's uh, mayonnaise. You use the blender's mayonnaise on its own. Just water it down a little bit more. Don't use the yogurt if you've got a dairy, a dairy uh, allergy person that you've got to take care of. And that's the sauce. So that's the sauce that we're going to it's going to be mainly used for the uh, the gravlax. But they're going to serve it with a wee salad. So we've got a nice little uh, pre-mix of leaves there with some nice purple uh, purple lettuce in there as well. A little uh, frisé, a little bit of um, baby spinach. So we're just going to make a very simple salad: olive oil and balsamic vinegar, cherry tomatoes. We're just going to. Very simple, very simple. We're just gonna wedge those, little wedges. Now you can peel them if you want, you blanch them off and peel them a little bit to make it a little bit extra special, but it's okay like this. Tomatoes, I personally love tomatoes. I eat plenty of tomatoes. All I do there is pop that inside the salad. I'm then gonna add mandarin segments yeah because just to uh, bring another little flavor into the uh, into the dish very simple just peel off our mandarin now I could have taken the skin off by hand and just pulled the um, pull the fillets out but I don't want any pith so I am trimming down that's done and then what I want to do here I just want to take out the fillets one by one in between so I don't want to have any pith I don't want any of the um, of the membrane in between so I just get a lovely little piece of um, a lovely little piece of um, mandarin fillet just fillet them out go down on the membrane turn your knife around come up the other side Cut them in wedges, following the natural uh, the natural uh, membranes of the fruit. As you can see, it's coming off nicely. Now you can either toss these into the uh, into the salad, or you keep them separate, and you just use them as a little garnish on the top. So I think we'll just hang on to those and put them on the side, and then we'll. Uh, so this one, throw it in the bin, no way. Squeeze him, out comes the orange juice. Add it to your salad, no waste, yeah? And then this one goes into the compost. Put it underneath my uh, date palm tree later on. Pop my little fillets of uh, orange or uh, mandarin, sorry, into here. So I've got my tomatoes, I've got my mandarin fillets, got my little lettuce, wash me hands. And then, what I want to do is wash my board off quickly for you. I need something crunchy. So I want something crunchy inside the uh, salad. So again, adding a little texture to the entire dish. And what I'm going to do, I've got a couple of hazelnuts. So I've uh, toasted off some hazelnuts. And all I'm going to do now you just very carefully chop them up nice and rough because I want to pop those inside the um, inside the salad and when you eat the salad you get this little crunchy and nutty taste from these beautiful hazelnuts that we've roasted off very simple just chop them up with your knife be careful because they roll about a bit now what nuts can you use whatever you like yeah we use a lot of almonds out in this part of the world as well we use cashew nuts yeah we garnish the biryanis and some of the uh, some of the Emirati dishes pine seeds a lot of pine seeds are used so whatever you feel that you want to do you can do there's no hard fast rule 
But what we should do though, is always have little elements in our dishes that give us a little bit of extra talking points, which is the crunchiness. So we're gonna just drop that in there. Just wash off my board again. So in there we've got the lettuce, we've got the tomatoes, we've got... I'm gonna pop my little tomatoes, my extra ones over here on the bench. And very simply, I'm going to pop this in another bowl. And then I'm going to dress the salad, yeah? We've got to season our salad, so we're going to season with black pepper. Just a couple of grinds. A little bit of salt. Not too much. Remember that we've got a, quite a bit of salt on the, um, on the gravlax. So we don't want to be uh, over salting the food because the gravlax will also help to flavour the entire dish. What else have we got? Done our dibs. Just pop all this away, Mr. Code. Bit of a clean up on the bench. So we've got our little sauce. Sauce ready. Garnish. The garni tua, which is the little uh, mandarin segments that we've done off. Put our blender's mayonnaise into the sauce. Balsamic vinegar. Again, a little bit sharp, a little bit sweet. Not too much, a little drizzle. Just to flavour and just to dress the leaves. And of course, our good old Rama olive oil. Sprinkle in there. And then all we do, once again, we just toss that salad nicely and we're going to, when we dress the dish, we're going to dress with our fingers, which is okay because I've got clean hands. We just coat the lettuce, we make sure the dressing is nicely on all the leaves. Nicely tossing through the toasted hazelnuts, making sure the salt and pepper gets in there as well. We've got a lovely little dress salad. You see I didn't use a lot, we don't want to drown him, yeah? And we don't want to make this too far in advance either because then we'd, uh, we'd have all the uh, lettuces wilting. So we want to do it all on a minute, right? So, here we go. Salad ready, sauce ready, garnish ready. Pop this away. Now the piece de resistance. Our lovely piece of Gravlax, which has been drying in the fridge for the last 18 hours. I'm going to make some room here. I'm going to bring out that. I'm going to have to get myself a little yellow board for this. I want to treat that as something different, so I've got that there. Right, I've popped in my fridge. I'm going to get my Gravlax. Nice and chilled. Even though it's 45 degrees outside, we're nice and chilled here. And there he is. There's our Gravlax. So our Gravlax has been sitting drying away. The, uh, the date crust or the date paste that we've put on top will have impregnated into the salmon. We're gonna get those flavors in there and now we're gonna slice him off. So, when I experienced putting this on, I found it was very sticky, yeah? And I found, I found that I was actually able to get a better result by keeping my fingers wet as I smoothed it over. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to have a little bowl of water next to me and a um, little bowl of cold water and I'm going to have a little bit of titch kitchen towel, get my trusty kitchen towel, my rabbit holder kitchen towel. Because what I want to do here is I want to keep the knife a little bit wet, yeah? Now, can you pass me a white plate, cameraman code? Can you get a plate out? One of those round plates on the left there. Because what I want to do, I'm going to slice him off. Thanks, Code. i um, going to slice him off, pop him on the plate there. So pick him up from the tail. Pop this over here. Now, here we go. Now we're going to see how we can, uh, how we slice. So I'm going to dip my, just going to have my knife a little bit wet. First I'm going to cut down, I'm actually going to start 
I'm going to move this off. This is a big thick piece. And as I said, remember I said I wanted to try and get this layer of dates and a layer of um, salmon. I want, I want you to be able to see the salmon and I want you to be able to see the date layer. And I'm just doing very thinly. And as you can see, we're getting the layer of salmon, the layer of dates on top, and then the beautiful uh, salmon as we slice down. I'll just turn this around so you can see it. We're slicing on a nice angle. We're not doing long slices because with Gravelax, you know, some people with smoked salmon, they do long slices. We used to always do long slices in the UK. So we'd, we'd slice off, we'd start slicing right at the top of the head of the salmon, slice down, and then get beautiful long slices that were as wide as the salmon, and then you could be creative in the way you decorate. Gravelax though needs to be sliced on an angle, so as you can get the, um, the flavouring, and there's, oops, nearly lost our water on the floor there, cameraman coat. Um, you get the... You get the, the, the layer of uh, flavour which would normally be your dill slice off now I haven't done this for a few years so I'm gonna to have to try and get myself to get it even thinner yeah now because you want to be able to see your knife as you go through so I can see my knife and as we start coming down we start getting into the brown uh, the brown meat of the uh, of the fillet yeah and we don't want to be serving that to the people so as we come down, we do a little V. And the little V makes sure that when we slice, we don't have any brown meat on the salmon. Now, my little, dill, my little experiment with the dates, it is, it is admittedly tricky to slice, yeah? because of the consistency of the dates. However, I'm getting enough flavor and enough date paste on my slices to be happy, yeah? Now, we haven't tasted this yet, but we're going to right now. So I'm gonna take off a slice for myself, coming down, as we can see, the, the colour is beautiful. Yeah, it's a, tricky one to, um, it's a tricky one to slice, but maybe we have to do a bit of modification. That's okay. You can see how thin it is. I don't know if you can see my finger behind there, Code. But you can... It's nice and thin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this over here. And I'm going to slice this. And proof is in the pudding, or proof is in the salmon. Ah, oh. just as we wanted it. The salt, still a bit heavy down this end because it's quite thin, but the salt is then balanced through the sweetness of the, uh, of the dates. So I'm quite happy with the marination there. I could have been a bit lighter, admittedly, on the, um, on the salt. Just wash my hands off after having that little taste. So back to slicing. So we're going to slice off a few slices and then we're going to get ourselves ready to plate up. Now, when you slice, young chefs, you've got a knife this long to use the entire blade. Yeah, that's why it's that long. If a salmon knife was meant to be that long, it'd be that long. Yeah, but you want to, you've got a long blade to get even slices. You don't sit there like scratching away like a chicken. Yeah, you take your knife and you draw your knife backwards and forwards and you go through the whole using the whole blade for your slices and with practice you'll be able to get this art of slicing down pat to get beautifully wafer thin slices of salmon yeah because that's what people want when they eat a nice salmon they want just wet me knife up 
Now they want thin slices, yeah? Here we go, slice this one off. Here we go, nice long slices. Coming down. I'm not getting much waste here. If I have my brown meat, I just pull him off, yeah? Done. How much should you serve a person? Maybe about 90, 100 gram, yeah? I think we're nearly there to do one plate, yeah? We'll do one plate in a minute. Let me do one more. So I've got my, now, maybe it's not as elegant, agreed, as, as the Gravlax with the finely chopped dill with slices, nice little thin, yeah? Or you're marinated in beetroot where you get the color of the red, purpley beetroot uh, marinating through on your salmon, but it's something different. If you don't try, yeah? If you don't try, you never know what you can come up with, young chefs. I'm gonna do one more slice, and then I'll prepare myself for a little bit of uh, A little bit of plating. God, where's Mario when you need him, I tell you. Right, so we're just gonna slice off one more little piece to eat, because I wanna see how the flavor is down in this thicker part of the salmon. Mm. And now one piece for cameraman code. Cameraman code's never, never tried this. Here you go, cameraman coat. Can you get a picture of that to see how thin it needs to be? How's that? Can you see through there? It's wafer thin. Here, try that coat. First time he's ever eaten Gravelax. He didn't like the first one that we did. It was a bit salty, didn't you, coat? So, I've got my Gravelax sliced off. I'm just going to pop me, me, up, me Gravelax over on the other bench for a minute. Need to clean up my knife. Give me a few seconds and I'll just clean up the table. So we've got ourselves organized. So I've got my salmon. I've got a little black slate because I think that'll look nice, you know, with this beautiful color of the, um, beautiful color of the, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Gravlax, with the color of the Gravlax. It's gonna really pop on the plate, it's gonna look nice, yeah? I'm not gonna make it swim in sauce, so I'm just gonna put a little, little line of sauce. I'm gonna line up my salmon, got my little salad at the end. I'm gonna have to do it, uh, I'll do it this way, so I'll do it to myself, and then I'll turn it around to you, yeah? Of how it should be served. I've got my lettuce, I've got my things. Here we go, so. Very small amount of sauce. You don't need a lot, because remember, Sauces are there to enhance, to give a little extra to your dish, yeah? So you don't want too much. We just put a thin line down the middle, yeah? Now, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit more, yeah? So a very simple line, yeah? I could have done a swipe for Chef Christian Gratnitzer, yeah? Swiping chef, but I've decided no swiping. Then I'm just gonna fold the little Gravlax. Just gonna make them stand up together. It's gonna pop them on top of that. So when the guests eat, so when the guests eat the Gravlax, they have to eat the sauce as well, yeah? When you're plating young chefs, plate once, yeah? You just pop your, you wanna put your food on the plate once. There's no, nothing worse than seeing a chef plating, then removing it, and then plating. And then for competition work, we don't wanna see that as well. We wanna put the food on the plate and stand back, and that's how it should look, yeah? That's why during competition work, we use photographs, we practice, 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 practice. Yeah, we don't wanna see all this mumbo jumbo. Now, little salad, I've got my little salad here. I'm gonna make him stand up in the corner. I've got my little bits of uh, tomato already through. I just finish off the salad nicely. Tiny little bit of salad. Remember, the hero of the dish is the Gravlax. It's the salmon, yeah? That's what you want to be looking at. That's what you want the people to see. That's what you want the people to taste, yeah? The rest is just an accompaniment, yeah? So we pop there. We get our little bits of, uh, little bits of, uh, what do you call it, mandarin segments. We only put a few on. Now people use tweezers, people use whatever. I use my fingers because I've washed them. You can use whatever you want, yeah? Chopsticks, yeah? 
And for me, there is a lovely little dish ready to go of Emirati flavoured Gravlax with a mint yogurt and blender's mayonnaise sauce and a little salad of uh, small leaves, a little mandarin and some roasted hazelnut. I hope you enjoy it. Experiment with the recipe, chef, yeah, because that's what it's about. So I'm going to put this one here. Code can take some pictures and I might do a couple of others, but enjoy, experiment, try out new things, have a great base recipe, have a traditional recipe, and then you start to play around young chefs, yeah? Don't all of a sudden want to become a molecular scientist as a chef, yeah? Start with the grassroots, start with dressing. Start with how to marinate and cure, yeah? Curing, um, stewing, making jams, all these traditional, traditional uh, techniques will enhance your knowledge of what to do in the future. Yeah, When you're becoming creative, when you want to understand the science of food, what you can do. This is very simple, yeah? Beautiful Gravlax. The science is in the Gravlax, yeah? The rest is just quite straightforward, yeah? But that's where the, that's where the technique comes from, that's where the knowledge is, is in making the salmon, making the curing, make sure it's safe to eat. Bon appetit, chefs. Satan in Arabic. Enjoy. See you again soon. Thanks, guys.